So this is going to be a little bit different of an episode because I usually just rapid fire questions to the people who are on it. But I, I've never shared this story before in public because I've been scared, but it's something that you are super vocal about. So I sort of want to talk to you about plant medicine. Oh, okay. And you even got choked up. I know. I'm like, plant medicine. Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, there's a reason why, but so I've never shared it before. You talk about your journeys, a lot of them, and I want, I have questions about it, but I think the fear of why I've never wanted to share is because of the judgment I had Mm -hmm. about it before. Mm -hmm. I'd never done psychedelics before. I, when I was 16, I smoked pot and I called 911. That really happened. Okay. <laughs> so those things didn't, you know, it just didn't, they didn't vibe with me. And I was going through a journey of healing and I tried narrative therapy since I was 15. Great. And I've been doing that forever. And I think I got to a point where I was so desperate for change yeah. that it was one of those I'll just give it to me. And I think it does call you, but it's been scary for me to sh share because I'm Cuban, grew up Catholic, very, you know, the in Latin culture, we're basically told that stuff is a no, no. Yeah. And I wonder how people are going to judge that um, because I judged it myself. Now knowing what I know, it's changed my life yeah. and I would love, you know, to hear what caused you. I know that you were in real estate, which weirdly, so was I. Okay. I was in real estate and I was making great money and I was bored, like really bored. And I knew that my life, I, it was like, is this it? I'm just going to make money and go to a job. And I changed my life substantially overnight. Um, and I knew that there was something more to my life. I didn't realize until I did psilocybin how much more there is to life. Life. Yes. Yeah. And I think what happened for me is I saw it. I kept saying downloads, but I've heard you use that word too. And it is just like you're downloaded information from a higher source of questions. So what, what made you do plant medicine for the first time? Was it the same sort of like desperation? Y yes. And before I answer that, what I want to say is what you just did was unknowingly um, speak out into existence the reason why we have judgment towards plant medicine or towards anything for that matter. Right. Um, it's, it's the frequency of separation. You said, I'm Cuban, I'm Catholic, I come from a Latin culture. And if you go further down that road, you're a certain race, you're a certain ethnicity, you come from a certain country, you, you have a certain social economic class, you're male, you're female, you have a name. The energy and the frequency of separation is the one that we live in here in the 3D world. Mm -hmm. And what happens in life is our soul has a purpose, uh, a mission. It, it, it comes down to remember a series of things about itself through actually discovery by forgetting everything. Right. We actually get our minds wiped, our, our, our memories erased. Some people have the gift of remembering their past lives. Um, I do not. But what happens is we come into this world and we are told by our parents, our caretakers, and by society who and what we are. And we go through life living through these limitations of what society, our parents, our teachers told us who and what we are. And those limitations eventually come to a boiling halt when something in our life happens that brings us to our knees. Mm -hmm. You know, for you, I don't know what it was, but you must have gone through something that got you so sick and tired of being sick and tired that you were like, you know, that thing that everyone tells me is crazy, I'm at that point where I just don't care anymore. Call me crazy, but give it to me because I need help. Right. And for me, that's what happened. My 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 mom passed away. And when when my mom passed away, she passed away in a really rough way. She had cancer and she had never smoked a day in her life and she had lung cancer. 
And so my mind was going crazy because I've always been able to like solve all of our problems, but I couldn't solve this problem. And I had to see my mom wither away and before my eyes. Um, I saw her, you know, putting all of her faith into a religious system, a set of beliefs. Uh, and, you know, eventually what happened was when she passed away, it's like it unlocked something in me where I started asking myself some very scary questions. Question number one was, are you happy? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we as human beings ask ourselves that question often enough because we're afraid of the answer. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of the answer. I had built a life where on the outside, yeah, it looked like I was happy. I had all the money in the world. I had a massive house. I had the car. I had a beautiful wife at the time. I had three beautiful boys. So you would think like, man, this guy's doing pretty you well. You have it all. Yeah, you have it all. The problem was I, I had it all based off of what society imprints in you you need in order to be liked, validated, loved, accepted, yes. right? Everything we were craving as ch children. Absolutely. Right. And the and the more that we crave it, the more that we don't receive it by our mother and fathers, the more that we go out to look for it out in what society tells us. Hey, you, you know, in this case, you kid, you didn't get love here. I'll, sh I'll show you how you're going to get love. You're going to get love by money, being, by money, by being powerful, by looking a certain way, you know, whatever the case may be. What Esther Hicks says is looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what happened. And so I asked myself, are you happy, right? And the minute I had the courage to actually ask myself that question and had the courage to be vulnerable with myself and actually listen to the answer, right? Like Pandora's box opened because the first thing that came up was my relationship. With your wife. Yeah, wife, at yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask myself, are you happily married? And I knew the answer. I knew the answer from the day I got married, from, from the day I exchanged vows. You knew that. I knew I wasn't was in love. Oh, yeah. I knew I wasn't. But I was in love with the idea of being in love yes. because I thought that by finding love in a relationship, I would find happiness. What I was actually looking for without knowing it at the time was I was looking for love in here, not out there. Right. If you don't have love in here, you can get married one, two, three, four, five times. You ain't never going to find love because a relationship is just a reflection and a mirror for how you feel about yourself and about life, right? Yes. And so that was the first thing. And I finally had the answer and, and it was no. It was no, you know, and the second thing was, are you happy in your career? And here I am, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big real estate broker, 400 agents working for me. We do a billion dollars in annual sales volume. It, it was, you know, seven offices here in Southern California, actually. And the answer was no, I, I was so stressed out. And I was so disheartened by how cutthroat the industry was and i was like sick and tired of like the show and of like like going to like these meetups where everyone was trying to like outdo the other person because of who sold more which by the way like i was the king mm -hmm. i was the king competitive like jerk you know but when my mom passed away something inside of me started to open it, it was my heart was it because of the grief of losing her or was it because you saw how fragile life was I, if I, you know, now that I have, I have journeyed and I, 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 I think that my mom and I had a soul contract and that she came here to experience what she experienced in life, to, to, to go through it in a, and, and die in such a painful fashion to cause me to finally start the process of awakening um, so that I could eventually help other people, you mm -hmm. know, through my purpose and my mission, which is what I do now. Um, and, you know, true story in several messages that I've received, received, I think my mom is now my daughter, Selena, is what I think. Don't you think you also had a soul contract with your father at some in some way? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Because we pick our parents. Yes. Yeah, you know, and that's I, and another. That, we we can't get into that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other subject, <laughs> yeah. and it's a and it's a rough one because you know in the work that we do, I mean, I've heard it all. I've heard I've heard and seen it all. I've seen we help a lot of women, 
you know, release the energy of sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, until you release the energy of sexual trauma, your root chakra is 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 blocked. Yeah. Well, your root chakra is your connection to Mother Earth, uh, and it's your connection to life itself. And so, if you are walking around like I did for most of my life until I had my activation, you are literally not activated as a human being. Right. So you could be the most successful, most best looking, drive the best car, have the best body, all of that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this as, as clear as, as, as I can tell you this, you have yet to be activated as a human being because there's blockages inside of your energy centers. So then going back to you're, you're going through this grief, you're realizing that you're not happy. What, where did you even know that plant medicine was not an option for you? Well, so I, I was highly religious, you know, I, I was very religious and um, I was the good boy. I, w I was the one that, you know, you know, the wives would let their husbands go, you know, to Cabo with you. I was going okay. because they knew Danny was like, would never do and you know was it true though or when oh, you would get no, there I was be like let's go no 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 no, no. Okay. I was okay. I was because I was by the book like if if the if the preacher told me do this I would do that I, I really was but I'll be honest deep inside of me I had my demons right yeah. I, I had my thoughts did I you had, act on them I never did mm -hmm. until my affair which we can go into that happily in a second episode three <laughs> yeah but um but 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 and 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 in many ways I I, I want to speak about that when I had an affair, I felt so much shame around that because I became the thing that I always judged and that people always saw me as I would never do. Right. It was like the mirror and like the facade and like the glass house that I had built of this perfect image so that you could love me and like me and appreciate me just came crumbling down. But at the same time, freeing, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, and I and I say that gently because it caused a lot of pain. Yes, a lot of pain in in my children, in my ex wife, and I I I don't I don't wish that pain on anyone. But for the first time in my life, even if it was you know bad, I was finally honest with myself, and I and I finally allowed myself to tap into my truth again even if it meant you know un i would never actually hurt you know my family but even if in the moment I, I i ended up hurting my family for me it was a moment of like like i get to be me it was a needed sabotage it 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 was yeah wait was this before or after your journey this was before okay so so, so that was the moment that like now yeah mom dies mm -hmm. you know you're not happy you you do this right the, the the glass house is falling apart and then three years prior i had had a situation with with religion where you know i had kind of left i no longer went to the church so i had nothing you so, had nothing to hold on there's no, no foundation no 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 everything that i used to once believe or think it was gone yeah and i was the guy that would say ayahuasca is evil ayahuasca is the devil because i you know because that was what i believed you know mushrooms forget about it those that crazy stuff is all of that stuff i was i was the guy on the pulpit i was the guy saying that and finally you know i'll, I'll never forget this but it was new year's and i'm looking on instagram and my friend his name is gerard adams by the way uh he's in the jungle somewhere and he's got this paint on his face and he's jumping around dancing to this weird like you know hippie music and he's got the biggest smile on his face but that smile was so big that it wasn't like his like you, you know how you know people yes, yes. and you know like that's a like, different <laughs> something is different yeah. right and i just remember going like i'm in such a rough place that like whatever that is i want that yeah and when i spoke to him he said dude i did ayahuasca and in that moment i said i'm in because I had gotten to a point where I knew I wasn't happy, I knew I wasn't being fulfilled, I knew I didn't know who I was, and I was willing to risk it all to discover joy and happiness and peace inside. Yes. Yeah. My journey when I did it, I got a lot of downloads about the chasing. For me, m my parents split up when I was about 14, mm -hmm. and I saw my mom, my whole financial life, 
crumbled. I went from being super comfortable to being evicted and homeless. And I looked at that with this ego, like I will never, well, that never let this happen to me. So, and this is important, especially for, for women to understand um, what what happens is this: if you, if you think about this as a little girl, life is great. You're protected. You're safe, and all of a sudden, that's a catastrophic incident. Yeah, trauma. Where that's very traumatic. So what happens is the heart sh- it closes. Yes, and you go. F- you go right into the mind and the mind goes never again will i ever experience that which you know if you want to talk masculine feminine i do it drives you into your masculine the 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 problem is there's nothing wrong with being in your masculine there's nothing wrong with being in your feminine we all are both we all are mind for 30 years but it came from a wounding yes and so the ego takes over it kicks in and it creates a story and the story sounds something like this. You're never going to feel that pain that you felt in that moment when you got evicted ever again. So then in order to never feel that pain, what do you have to do and right. who do you have to become? Right. Right. And what do you have to let go of? Right. You have to let go of that innocence. You have to let go of that inner beauty, quite frankly. And you got to go into like make shit happen mode. Right. And then in our culture today, unfortunately, a lot of women, you know, are, are spending 20, 30, 40 years of, of their life in that energy. And we're applauded for it. Well, yeah. We're rewarded for it. Yeah. We're called boss babes. Yeah. Badass. You know, yeah. self-made. Yeah. But in my journey, what came through was what we said earlier. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to get emotional. That's okay. That I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. And that everything that I was looking for out there was here that's right and i it, i was wearing my watch which i bought when i first like got made money and it's it was like look at that watch it means nothing you guys made it mean something mm-hmm. like go back within and just like get back to your heart and your soul and it, that to me was the most amazing experience because for so long i was blaming the men in my life you know, I was pointing fingers and I was holding this backpack of my story. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was like, instead of a backpack, it was like my armor. Yeah. I'm self-made. I don't need anyone. I'm in my masculine. I think I grew a small penis. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, but, but I, <laughs> I was in my masculine all the time. Yeah. And what that would do was keep everyone away. I would create, you know, I would uh, attract toxic relationships of course. and not because of them, because of me too. I had to take responsibility for that. And my whole life fell apart and it wasn't about all all the things. And that's scary because everything that I worked for for th- 30 years meant nothing. Yeah. What we as human beings don't realize is that the energy that we live from inside of ourselves is the energy that creates and attracts and uh, I, I'll say it this way, it, it's the energy that creates the life that we live on the outside. So if you, for example, in relationships are constantly attracting men that are not loving, that are not kind, that are not providing the safety that you need that are not providing the the you know the the holding after sex that they don't yeah. look at then, you in you know the what then eye, i'm right that they don't but then i'm right i'm right then i get to always be right right because you are creating and you are drawing in the exact type of man that you need to prove the story that you are living from inside of yourself. And by the way, until you awaken and heal that initial wound, guess what you do? You unconsciously are constantly blaming them. Yeah. But what you don't realize is who's the one that attracted them? Me. Me. Right. Right. Like I was the common denominator. Yes. And right? you always will be. Isn't it weird that I keep dating these people? Yeah. And then I did the work and what I saw in that journey was it was me. Right. It was me that had to do the the real work. And I it took me 47 years. Thank God not 47 men. Yeah. But <laughs> don't start that rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it took me 47 years to realize it it all boils down and even money everything boils down to self-esteem and how you feel about yourself everything all, everything all of life so there there's three energies of human mastery there's money there's there's food and then there's sex right 
Um, and, 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 and sex is a big one because the frequency of sex is the frequency of the creation of life itself. And so like one of the things that I, I, I teach about is that, you know, if, if you look at most all religions, for example, they, they'll have some sort of a negative connotation or rule when it comes to sex. Shame. Because, because the frequency of shame and guilt gets attached to the very act of creating life. You unknowingly are living, unknowingly are living from the energy of shame and guilt in your life as a result. And you can never reach your highest self. You can never be your highest self. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so back to the journey. Sure. So those were my sort of downloads. And I think the biggest also takeaway was of t removing this armor that I've been holding on to because yeah. my story, what I thought gave me uh, strength and my success yeah. was actually what was weighing me down. Mm -hmm. So for you, you do this ayahuasca and and did your whole life transform what were the downloads that you got yeah i don't i mean okay so and how long ago was this three years five years five ago. years okay yeah me too so so to to preface what i'm about to say i i i, I have always desired the truth and i have always desired to hear god's voice whatever god was Always. I was that guy at church, for example, that would pray extra hard, right? And um, I don't know, I just always had this desire to be connected to, you know, wh whatever, whatever it was, right? So for me, it wasn't so much about like downloads, for example. I mean, I did ayahuasca like 12 times. Like I, 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 did, I did mushrooms 10 times. In a therapeutic sense? In a ceremonial sense, yes, yes. So. Which is, it's very important that people understand that is that that you you're know, not a ra at a rave. Oh no, no, right, no, 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 right. no. This is a, it's a beautiful, sacred. That's how mine was as well. Ceremony and um, and every time, here, here's how I'm going to explain it. Let's say this is bliss. Let's say this is you living a life. I think we've all heard of like the law of attraction and you can manifest anything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We've course. all heard of this, right? And we love watching these videos. Well, let's say that's that. This this is that point where you literally think of anything and it shows up. Dream partner, just give it 30 days. Dream money, it'll come as soon as you want it to. Dream body, just set the intention and it'll come, right? Dream house, dream whatever. Literally, let's let's just, that's this, mm -hmm. right? Well, what happens is, is that depending upon the level of trauma, the level of hurt, the level of pain that we are living from, we are like here, mm -hmm. right? Add sexual trauma, for example, that's that's more back here, mm -hmm. right? Add sexual addiction. trauma, add a, well, addiction is the result of True. the trauma, but add, you know, I've dealt with people who their parents have molested them mm -hmm. like re really deep deep stuff right so the further away you are right the more you have to work on mm -hmm. yeah and the further away you are i want to call this love this is infinite love infinite abundance infinite possibilities this is oneness this is when you finally understand that there is no separation not even between you and i correct but between you and god right as a matter of fact, there is no name that you can name that thing. It's right. the infinite source of all love, all abundance, all everything. Yes. And you as a human being can arrive to this state. Yeah? Yes. This is what Jesus did. Right. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell us. Right. He was trying to tell us when they asked him and they persecuted him, who are you? I am. Right? Right. If you study it, enlightenment, your God view is I am. Right, because we are all God in in human form. Right, right, and so what happens is is that I found myself somewhere here, mm -hmm. and I was like, I think this is available, and so I'm gonna go all in, and I just kept going and I 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 kept going. Pause, and then I attracted my partner, and the most magical thing that I can tell you is that when you are awakened and healed 
And when you are vibrating from the right frequency, yes, you get to call in the partner that will take you the next part of the journey. It's the part of the journey that you cannot do on your own. And sometimes I'll talk about this on social media and people are like, are you saying that I have to have a man in order to reach my heart? Yeah. The same way I have to have a woman. Because partnership, there's something that happens the in a relationship. The mirroring, the mirroring of, it. of it. That it brings you face to face with your deepest bullshit. Yes. Your ego, the yes. parts of you that doesn't like to be wrong, the parts of you that always likes to control, but the be careful. parts of you that likes to manipulate, the parts of you that likes to defend, all of that. But be careful though, Danny, because there are going to be people who are listening to this who are in toxic relationships, the ones that they shouldn't be in, that are marrying the wrong thing, that it's this constant struggle. Well, hang on. going to be like, well, should I stay here? Well, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let's just get something straight. If you are in a toxic relationship, it is because you are toxic inside. Right. Period on the story. <laughs> okay. Yes. Period on the story. You cannot be, you cannot attract a toxic partner if you don't first treat yourself in toxic manners. Look yes. at the way that you eat. Look at the way that you speak to yourself. Look at the way that you think. Look at what you see when you look at the mirror. Look at what you say to yourself when you put on clothes and you don't feel beautiful or whatever the case may be. Look at how often you compare yourself to other people because of what they have yes. or how they look. All of that is toxic. Yes. All of that is disconnection it was, from love. Correct. And it was my chasing of success in order to feel good enough. Yeah. Was my toxic trait. So if you are chasing success in order to feel good enough, right, then guess what kind of a man you're going to attract? Someone that is chasing a certain kind of looking you're a beautiful woman thanks yeah you're a beautiful woman so they're gonna want they're gonna want the 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 trophy the thing right because it makes them feel more successful you're in the same frequency yes you get it yes yeah and this is what i call a mind mate until we heal and until we awaken to our highest self we will continuously attract from our the wounding and the fear of the mind mm -hmm. versus the love and the openness of the heart. Agreed. Yeah. I went to Hoffman Institute. Do you know what that is? Um, no. It's like a it's a seven day retreat. Um, they have two places um, locations, but it's all about inner child work. And I did it last oh, year, and yeah. it was intense. Yeah. And it was only until I did all of that work, and it was very very deep yeah is when i finally attracted the first and i even hate to admit this the first healthy relationship i've ever been in my entire life it's crazy how that happens huh it's wild yeah and it was worth all of that you know all of that work in order to do this but it's like oh my gosh why didn't i know this sooner well this is why we do awaken yeah we, we, we do awaken because i like to call it 30 years of therapy in three days but in truth, it's even better than that because 30 years of therapy, and I'm not like therapy has its place. It's wonderful. But you have to understand that when you're in therapy, you're only, it's this. Right. It's the mind. In order for you to self actualize, in order for you to become your fullest version of yourself, you have to heal the mind. You have to heal and open the heart. And you have to heal the body. Somatic. All of work, it. yes. All of it. Wait, so uh, hold on, because now you're telling me that you've done ayahuasca and you did psilocybin m multiple times. When I did it, I it was a therapist basically that I worked with. We did narrative therapy first so that if anything came up sure. during that journey, that they would know how to deal with that. Now, little did I know, I didn't even say a word for four hours. I just yeah, cried yeah, for yeah. four hours. Yeah, yeah. But w how? why did you feel the need to continue doing journeys did you not feel like you got enough downloads in the f the first few because i didn't want to live here mm -hmm. and i knew there was more to work on so did I you wanted find i wanted this okay you know what i'm saying yeah i had in my past life i had read enough books i had done i i everything i i i, I wanted to reach the purest version of myself. I wanted to discover me. I wanted to discover this thing we called God, right? I wanted all of it. So, and I think this is also very, very important. I know people who have done 10 times the medicine I've done, but it's not just the medicine, it's the integration after the medicine. Yes. 
right? Absolutely. So like, I'll give you an example. I went to the extreme of, I went like two years with no TV in my house. Um, before I attracted my wife, I, I was celibate for a long, a long period of time. Um, I cord cut anyone that I had sexual relations with and relationships with in the past. Um, because I feel like that's another thing that we don't understand is that whenever we have sex, it's an, it's an exchange, exchange of energy. It's an exchange of energy. And so you are like drawing in people's energy and the frequency in which they live from. So I've, we've worked with a lot of people that like have a lot of doubts, a lot of worries, a lot of concerns, a lot of stress. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm always like a, bu a bunch of that isn't even yours. Mm -hmm. How many partners have you had? Oh, the, okay. Step number one, you need to go court cut every single one of them. That's how deep it is. And people don't realize that. And then, and so did you notice that in those journeys that you just got closer and closer to yeah. you did? Yeah. So you got different messages every time. Well, yeah, it was not just mess. I mean, you know, my first journey was the scariest moment of my life because I was such a control freak that I wouldn't let go of control. Yeah. And then the next couple of journeys, I was avoidant because I wouldn't, I didn't want to go in, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I remember I was living life on the outside. So I was the guy that was leaving and walking around at the journey, right? And then, you know, finally I got to a place where I just laid there for four hours and it, 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 it just, it becomes more than just messages. I can tell you in my own physical experience, um, my root chakra opened. This was a physical, energetic experience that you f you literally feel, and my heart chakra opened as well. So it's in one of the later journeys in, that you did in different journeys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah but, I, but then, like, and and I want to say this also. I'm at a place now where I don't sit with medicine anymore. That's what I was going to ask you because life becomes the medicine. Right. Yeah. So I've noticed since I've done it now three times, all three journeys were completely different. I yeah. probably haven't done it in like two or three years, but I noticed that now when I go to meditate, it's almost as if I'm back there again. It's instantaneous. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain why. Okay, tell me. So a lot of people have a difficult time with meditation. Remember the example I gave you. Mm -hmm. This is you are connected straight, right? Yes. Yeah. And so imagine if you're here, then what's a, what did you say happened when you were a little girl? Uh, that my parents broke up. You were They I broke was, up and evicted. So what yeah. happened? What did you do? You yeah. went up here. Correct. This is the heart. Yeah. So when people have a hard time meditating is because they have a hard time with their mind. Mm -hmm. The mind never stops racing because the mind and the ego's job is to keep you safe. So it's constantly thinking, it's constantly looking, it's constantly judging, it's constantly comparing, it's constantly, right? So when you go to close your eyes, you're like, you, you, you can't, right? The beauty of the medicine, and if I were to say what the medicine does is the medicine removes a lot of the energy and a lot of the blockages and opens you and connects you spiritually to source so that once you're open, now on your own, you can go and meditate and instantaneously. And we do this at Awaken through breathwork as well. Breathwork, it's, yeah, we should talk about that too. But yeah. So I've never done ayahuasca. I've only done psilocybin because to even the four hours that I'm in the cer ceremony with psilocybin is a lot for me. Yeah, yeah. So imagine I'm going to be pooping in front of people in for 12 hours. Like, well, I don't I can't, well, you, you know. Well, you, you could or you could not. You never know. Yeah, well, I you know it's a little <laughs> scary. So what is the difference of the journey of psilocybin and ayahuasca? Did you find it was the same sort of downloads? No, very different. How so? So psilocybin mushrooms are more, they call them the little teachers. Um. You know, it, it they, they, they became famous back in the 60s and 70s. There was a shaman named Maria Sabina uh, in Mexico. And famous people like Elton John and or John Lennon would, 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 would come to her, fly to Mexico. She was just this little lady that would just like grow them and just pop them in and like people would like have an experience, you know. Um, so the way I like to think of it is the mushrooms is like with the mind. A lot of your limiting and subconscious beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then ayahuasca is the heart, and for women especially, the womb. I've been, I'll, I'll tell you a true story. I was in a journey. I was in a journey a ceremony. I was, I, I put together a, a group. There was about 30 of us, right? And I wasn't in, I was, you know, co-facilitating, helping, whatever the case may be. And um, 
and I, I saw a woman and she kind of like got up and she was staring at a wall of like grass, like greenery. She was just there, you know, and she was, I think, maybe making some hand movements or whatever the case may be. Okay, whatever. And then next thing you know, she comes back, and then the next day we integrate and we talk about, you know, what happened. And she goes, I was looking at a wall of uteruses. That's what she saw. I kid you not. Literally, the next second, someone goes, oh, my God. And then we were like, why? She, what happened? She's like she did surgery on my uterus and then the next nine different women all in the same place all had health issues with their uterus and the medicine literally went in spiritually and energetically and created surgery right spiritual or energetic surgery right and all of them had their uteruses healed the wildest shit i, I i've had i've had women who never grieve their uh, miscarriages, mm -hmm. who reconnect with the baby, mm -hmm. the soul of the baby, and cry. And next thing you know, 10 other women all heard the baby crying during their journey. It's... So it's, what, it's 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 no I it's another I'm here with you I thing. totally yeah, get yeah, it yeah. but there are some people that when I would tell them the stories they think well oh that's just your subconscious talking to you but I'm I don't I'm not that smart no. <laughs> you know no this is this is infinite wisdom it's infinite exactly and with ayahuasca here's what I can guarantee you it is the the purest form of love that a human being can ever experience or feel. Not even your mother can give you this kind of love. I did, when I did the journey, I did find so much compassion and empathy for my parents. Yeah. For something for, that I was holding on for so long, I, f I saw them as children and all of the trials and tribulations that they have gone through and I let go of a lot of that stuff. Sure. And I know that some people say that they have bad trips. So what do you think about that? first off I don't like using the word trip okay because it's bad because journey. it's not a trip right um, second there is no bad journey every journey is exactly what you needed it to be so I'll give you an example remember I said my first journey was the scariest day of my life yeah um, it, you would consider that a bad journey right well after processing it what actually happened was I was afraid of releasing control mm -hmm. because my whole life I was a control freak. So then came a pivotal moment. After that journey, I was like, I'm never doing this again. Never. I will never do this again. And the shaman comes up to me and talks to me and he says, um, he says, Danny, he says, you know what the second bravest thing in the world is to do? I said, what's that? And I'm like mad. I'm mad because like, I like... I, I wasn't trusting anybody. I was like, I'm not doing this again. He says, to do ayahuasca for the first time. And then he goes, do you know what the bravest thing in the world to do is? And I go, fuck, I know what he's gonna say already. <laughs> to do ayahuasca after you've had a rough experience for the first time. And I, he says, you have the courage within you to do it, but you also have to make the decision if you wanna do it or not. That moment, I cannot tell you how perplexing that moment was for me because here I was, I had such a horrible experience that I vowed to never do something ever again. Right. And I was like, I gotta do it. Why are those? And it ended up being the best, the most beautiful moment of my life. And would you recommend that people do it back to back like that? I only recommend, uh, first off, um, let me do the politically correct thing, right? This is not for everybody, and, right? And if and if you feel called by this message, um, um, I I recommend that you go away. Um, I actually recommend that you go away from America, like go into a jungle, go to a beachfront resort, you know, something like that. Go be in nature. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to, like, especially here in L.A., like, the energy is, like, so thick and so dense, right? Like, go somewhere. Go just get away for a week. Go get away for a week and go do three journeys over the course of seven days. I'm telling you right now, it will change your life. Just so you're listening, like, Danny is not a doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Do not DM me. <laughs> no, don't. And then if you want, go to Reunion 
reunionexperience.org. They're my friends. Um, the Costa Rican retreat. They're in Costa Rica. They're wonderful, yeah. So I want to shift a little bit because when I was in that journey, I was telling you I was I was tracing this, this success and being in my masculine constantly. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been in my masculine for 30 years. Yeah. Now, again, for the first time, I'm really just feeling the most feminine I've ever felt in my entire life. Yeah. And weirdly, like, people look at me different and they also respond to me differently. Yeah. I feel softer. I feel like I don't need to be, like, on defense all the time. And I just feel more relaxed. But you've gotten some sort of feedback about the machismo masculine feminine conversation. So can we can we sort of discuss that a little bit? You can bit? ask me whatever you want. Okay. Because in in our culture, in Hispanic culture, like it is the man and then the woman. You know, and especially as a woman, a Latin woman, we're taught that the man comes first, then the kids, then the house, then the dog, then the cat. Which I don't agree with by the way. Well, we neither do I. I I if you really look at the order of things, it's, you know, God source whatever you want to call it then the woman because life comes from the woman and then it's the man and then it's the children yes yeah so for women like me because if you would have told me 10 years ago 15 years ago to let a man make decisions or even take charge in any way i'd be like sure pal <laughs> cool <laughs> over my dead body yeah and now i feel like i could take a deep breath because i have somebody in my life that i trust because i trust myself now so there is that. Your, your reaction to anything is just a reflection of what you feel and what you're dealing with inside. And if there is ever, a, like, I'll put it to you this way. You want to get into a place in life. Remember this? Mm -hmm. Th this person doesn't react. What do you mean? This person, you can tell them anything. They could see anything. They could hear anything. It doesn't bother them. Because they're in their own essence. Because they've returned. Yes. They've returned. So this person, you could say the word masculine mm -hmm. and be like, cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but to a, a woman in particular, ladies, I love you. I hope you can feel my energy. Like I'm not, but it, but it, what I have experienced to a woman in particular, if I say the word masculine and a woman is in her wounding, it's a, I, Triggered. all I have to say is that word. Just that one word alone, right? The flip side of that, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you that I, I, I have held space for 400 women who have all for the very first time in their life in front of me said out loud that they have experienced sexual abuse, rape, trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, that's a really beautiful part of the work that I do. I just bring that up because you you don't get to that place in trust if you're coming from a bad place. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that when you speak of masculine, right, it's just a word to define an energy that all of us, men or women, have. Yeah, we both have. Yes, we 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 we, we all have that drive, that vision, that 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 focus, that planning, that determination, that provider energy. Yeah, we yes. all do. But at the same way, we all have feminine. Yes. Yeah, and we all have that that feminine energy that just wants to sit on a couch and relax and not have to do anything and be taken care of. I do. Well, you feminine do. energy is also a caretaker too, as, as a mother. As a mother. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do you feel like in relationships it has to be a constant seesaw where even if the man is in his feminine, then the woman needs to be in her masculine more? Can I get, uh, I'm going to be honest, you get to a place where you no longer label it as that. Right. But but it is a dance. Call it a flow. A flow. A I flow. like that. Yeah. In my relationship, for example, in my relationship, um, I provide... 100% financially for my partner. Um, that does not mean that she does not get to earn money. She could. I, as a matter of fact, I push her. I push her. I support her uh, when she needs help. Um, you know, if she needed help around the house, we hired a full-time person. When she needed more help so she can get back to doing the things she loves, I hired a secondary person. There is no level of support that I will not give her. The difference is she gets to make money by doing what she loves, not by doing what she has to do to survive. Right, but most That's people don't difference. have that luxury. But you can attract it. 
Okay, so then last last thing that I want to discuss is also in my journey of like the lack of needing not needing money because we all need money and I do believe success is just energy and you could bring it into your sure. life. But how has this whole journey of ayahuasca and plant medicine and your spirituality has changed your views on success cuz you came from success. This this Danny Morel business is successful but you were successful before this. So how has the spirituality has changed your view on money? Well, money or success? Money. Okay. Um, I wasn't successful before. Uh, I was a deeply fragmented human being that didn't know how to love, that didn't know how to love his wife, that didn't know how to love his children, that didn't know how to sit calmly and have a conversation without some form of judgment going on in his head. I was the typical the guy, you know, the guy out there who's su who's successful, right? I don't call that successful. Um, I think that a successful human being is someone that discovers who they are and that knows who they are and that authentically can live from that energy and that frequency. And what I will tell you is this, this is my guarantee. When you return to that and you find that and you reconnect to that, You'll probably make two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times the money without having to work. Right. Because the money just becomes a reflection of you and the way you want to serve humanity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's my answer. But what, what if somebody is listening to this and they're like, well, I want to be an art teacher? An art teacher? Yeah. Then go be an art teacher. No, I know, but that's not going to be, what if the, right now they're a lawyer? So it's not gonna bring the five, six, seven. No, 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 you don't know that. Hold on, you don't okay. know Okay. <laughs> right. Because watch, let's break this down. First, why did you wanna become a lawyer? Right. That's that's the big question you have to Cause answer. Because dad was gonna be proud of them. Because dad was gonna be proud, because yeah. mom was gonna be proud, because I was forced to go into school, because I'm argumentative, because whatever. Yeah. Yeah? Right, probably. Okay. <laughs> right, so. Not all lawyers. <laughs> not all lawyers, but, like, but I'm just, yeah, yeah, don't get mad at me, but like, I'm, just, I'm just giving you an example, right? Okay, so then, so then like, that's you, right? You make a million bucks a year, right? So to one aspect, there's shitty lawyers. There's lawyers that don't make any money. The same way there's doctors that make money and don't make money. Right, the right. same way there's everything, right? But you within you have the capacity to make that money. You can make a million bucks, right? That capacity doesn't go away. When you awaken and you heal, it actually gets magnified mm -hmm. so that you will find a way to make one or two or three million dollars doing the art that you love to you're do. You're right, you're right. What is your daily practice? Meditation? How do you connect with yourself? Um, meditation, visualization, breathing. The big one is connecting to Mother Earth. And how do you do that? What does it look like? I just have to take my shoes off and like for 20 to 30 minutes, go step in nature. And I need that more than anything because um, because of my energy and because of how many people I deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and because of my human design, which is another thing that I think that everybody needs to learn. Um, I'm going to throw a link out there, dannymorell.com backslash human design. You just need your birth date, birth place and birth time. And it'll tell you all about you. I'm a generator. Yeah. And I'm a reflector. Right, so so think about that. Reflector is completely an open channel. We just reflect back, right? And so because I deal with so many people, that's a lot of energy that I struggled for a long time sleeping. What I didn't realize is that I have to ground. Mm -hmm. So remember that root chakra that I mentioned? Yep. That's your connection to Mother Earth. Mother Earth literally, we are made as human beings to not be wearing shoes, right? We used to be walking around butt naked, barefoot right but the the energy of mother earth can heal you so that's one of the big things that i do is ground thank yeah. you so much yeah. i could sit here for another two hours and talk to you, you <laughs> thank have, you we got to do episode two and three and four whenever you want thank you yeah thank you